So um, I'm going to go really fast. I have 20 minutes um, to go through you know, 11 key trends to watch. So the first trend I want to get into is what we call um, attentionomics. And I think this is, this is something I've been talking about and been obsessed with, actually, for the last five years. The reality is there's a lot of content and limited time. I think what's going to happen is that marketers are going to start to realize that, it's, that reach is just kind of an empty metric. It's like a big bag of potato chips that you buy, and you, you feel like it's really full, and then you open it, and you see like there's six chips inside. Um, and I think that that's, that's really what's going to happen, because people are going to recognize that the, the number of impressions required to generate a behavior change is, is going up because of the sheer number of inputs. You have to go where the conversation is. You have to you know, scale your surface area with digital embassies. You know, and those are basically places you set up inside major social networks where there are conversations and, and, uh, and engagement. Visuals, though, really help. If you do visualizations, like we did for eBay here, um, or you think about gaming, they help you break through the noise. People have engaged far more with visuals. The studies show that. Um, and then second, finally, you have to think about what we call day-parted engagement. It's not just where you engage, how you engage, who, but it's increasingly when. You need to know what time of day and day of week your audience is most likely to be online and engage with digital channels. Two, curation. Um, there's a lot of you know, content out there. There's a, a market for everybody who can separate art from junk. You know, uh, and so some of that will be automated. Some of that will be, uh, will be human powered. But every brand can become a curator. So when you curate, you're, you're editorializing. You're, you're framing up an issue the way you want people to see it. You can make this uh, you know, collaborative and social in the process, which can help you, uh, you know, generate additional equity. So you know, thinking about curation, big opportunities, there's a lot of niches that are underserved right now. Three, uh, developer engagement. This one's a little further out, but I'm telling you now that it's going to be really important. The, all the value in social networks and in the mobile space, which is where time and attention are increasingly going, is being created mostly through third-party independent developers. They're everyone from solo entrepreneurs to small companies that, you know, that develop hits like Angry Birds. Look at Angry Birds, a phenomenon. And if you work with developers and you make your assets available to them, whether it be your content or your data, and they begin to embed it into their existing applications, you increase your surface area. So if every app you know, has a visa inside, which they do, then it becomes you know, part of an ecosystem. Four, transmedia storytelling. This is a bit of a buzzword that's, that's flying around, but I want to clarify what we mean here. If there's one constant in a world of change is that we love stories. Our society is driven by stories. Well, we need to recognize that a narrative today is no longer consumed as a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's, it's disconnected. So we may read about the end on Twitter and then do some Google searching to find out about the beginning and the middle. Uh, or we may read about the middle somewhere and stay tuned to Twitter or Facebook subscriptions to pick up the end. So you need to recognize that you have to help your audience connect the dots in your narrative. Five, thought leadership. Um, we've seen in our own data that the companies that, that propagate new ideas, that, uh, that activate credible individual expert voices, earn greater trust. But expertise remains very powerful. And ideally, people who have earned some sort of accreditation, either a formal accreditation or through the media. As, as, uh, as a recognized uh, thought leader. So those people, who, if you can put those out there, you will earn greater trust, and you will be able to resonate in conversations. So build an expert hub. Identify your subject matter experts and put them out there. Six, integration. So social media largely is compartmentalized in the marketing department or in the PR department in most organizations. Uh, but we're seeing that a lot of companies now are starting to think bigger and looking to actually have it span across the entire organization. I like to say that social media should not just be 100% of one person's job. 
it should be 1% of 100 people's job in a perfect situation. Uh, some leaders like Dell and Gatorade have set up social media command centers that run 24-7, and they do more than just monitor for issues. They actually get information into people's hands when they need it. So the product teams at Dell get real-time information. Customer service gets information, finance, legal. So if you really show people how to make this part of your jo their job, uh, it helps. Seven, um, ubiquitous social computing. Every device is going to become social in some nature. Your TV, um, this microphone stand, um, and so everything is going to start to create content. And consumers, some of them, are starting to actually create content in unique ways. This is a scale you can buy. It's called the Why Things. And <clears throat> what it does is, when you step on it, it tweets your weight. <laughs> These immaculate websites we build, these palaces, your website's still really important. I'm not going to say it's not, but it's, people now are going to consume that content in all kinds of interfaces that you don't control or own. Think about how you optimize your programs for mobility, not mobile. Eight, location, location, Facebook. So location-based services, a lot of hype in terms of the social networking side of it. Um, and, but the reality is Facebook is going is to take this and transform it. They're the ones who are going to make, you know, who are going to take Foursquare and do what it should be. So I think that what we should do is when you, when you build out programs, think about four main trends, local, social, photo, and mobile. Uh, nine, social media schizophrenia. I think the average Joe or Jane is going to start to think about that also. They're going to start to say enough. They know that Twitter's there. They know that Facebook's there. They're going to make choices about where they spend their time. Um, and so what that means is don't over push it on people. Let them self-select. Let them do what they want, make it available, make it an option, but don't push it on them. So I see some sites moving their commenting system to, to Facebook. Great, but you're forcing people who want to comment that way to log in through Facebook. Ten, uh, Google strikes back. So um, Google and social are, are an oxymoron. Um, they, they really don't get social. They're an engineering culture. They're not a social culture. Um, but where they're going to win is they're going to make social incredibly indexable and discoverable. They will, already they're doing a better job of indexing Twitter uh, than, uh, than, than Twitter is themselves. So think about how you create content that's regionally relevant and, uh, and contextually relevant. If you're not creating quality content that's socially discoverable, you will not be found on Google. End of story. Uh, last one, Viva La Social website. So everyone's been focusing on the, on the embassies, if you will, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. But you know, your website, as I mentioned, is still important, even though it's changing a little bit. Uh, and we're seeing people bring social functionality back into their website. So kind of have that picture-in-picture -picture approach. Think about how you really, you know, bring social or social window into your website, but then also how you bring social, uh, you know, uh, bring your website into social networking. So con connecting that, you know, that your hub to the spokes is going to be an important strategy that will help you build uh, additional uh, thought leadership for people who are interested in what you have to say.